yes i can hear you good afternoon good afternoon welcome to this interview board thank you where are you speaking from uh, sir i am currently in kushinagar uttar pradesh uttar pradesh kushinagar okay so i see from your profile that you are working in gurugram uh, yes sir You left your job in 23 in Gurgaon. Yes, sir. I left in April 2023. Any particular reason? Why did you leave the job? Uh, sir, actually, I had made my mind to uh, prepare for civil services full time since it it was a very uh, hectic and time consuming job. So I was not able to balance okay. uh, both job and preparation. Mm hmm. What was your job like? in your company mckenzie yes sir it, it was a management consulting job and my designation was a business analyst yes what was the job like what a job contained what were your sir, duties uh, yes sir sir i worked on uh, two projects sir and uh, both the responsibilities in both projects were different first one was a private sector insurance company where i was looking into how new age insurance products can be brought into india for that particular client and there's a second project was open network for digital commerce which is a government of india initiative in that i was part of team which was writing an external facing report for them in which mckenzie was a knowledge partner very interesting but how is it am uh, i related or connected to civil engineering Uh, so it's true that Did it's uh, not academic program other than civil engineering no sir uh, it's not uh, i didn't pursue any other uh, program but sir mckenzie came uh, to iit delhi in college placement and they didn't rent okay. had a branch uh, they they were pretty much branch agnostic and the work uh, profile over there was more to do with aptitude where you get sufficient on job training and you can execute things with a certain level of aptitude and help okay okay so you learn all this thing on the job yes sir okay so uh, uh the very interesting uh, profile in terms of your job experience i was just wondering how it can be helpful to you in a civil service career from yes. a consultancy from a business analyst to a civil service which yes, may sir. primarily primarily um, there are so many branch primarily means indian administrative service police service foreign service there are many other branches of course yes sir sir as we see a uh, role of consulting is ex uh, ex ex expanding and we see a lot of government work is being outsourced to consulting firms and sir here in lies the importance of my skills which i have acquired uh, during my brief stint there i have developed good analytical skills i have developed a knack of framing things from scratch and uh, delivering results so and i have worked in diverse uh, industries as well so i have gained some adaptability so sir all these states would help me uh, when i come to civil services also good now if i move forward what do you think are the challenges before the bureaucracy in india nowadays challenges before the bureaucracy and you can keep any particular branch of bureaucracy in your mind whether it's police or, or district administration or you can keep any branch of bureaucracy in your mind and then tell me what are the challenges before the bureaucracy in india today yes sir sir first of all uh, we see that bureaucracy is not able to adapt to the technology at to the extent it should be uh, there is a lag in terms of uh, what how technology is progressing especially ai artificial intelligence and other things and how government is still lagging behind to cover up all this second problem is sir uh, we see a lot of uh, there is still uh, in some section there is an iv ivory tower attitude which is uh, a sense of colonial mindset is still present and uh, bureaucracy is still treated as uh, some elitist job and it is
not very public friendly uh, especially attitude of a few uh, few people there and third i would say okay. sir uh, yes sir the third i would say would be sir uh, this constant debate of generalist versus uh, the specialist so uh, with new domains like climate change cyber crimes often we see that uh, specialized capabilities are lacking within the government and uh, a generalist ge doesn't generally uh, is not able to fulfill all that requirement which is needed okay so from your this answer it leads to that uh, that the specialist or experts of a particular subject should be asked to manage or administer or head particular discipline or subjects so for example uh, science and technology and agriculture and health the doctor should be in health ministry and agriculture scientist and like do are you suggesting that sir uh, to an extent we see all this happening in through lateral entry which which is being promoted by the incumbent government and sir but i somehow uh, to an extent disagree also that uh, it can be very much possible that within the generalist framework we can promote specialization like many committees have recommended that after a mid career of 14 15 years the officer should be assigned some domain and they should work in that specialized domain in this way they can use their experience on ground which they acquired in the initial part of career and later specialize in a career also good i i i appreciate your concern uh, i am very interested to know that in your hobbies you have mentioned composing ghazals yes sir am i correct which yes, language sir. which sir? sir primarily hindi and urdu ghazal. sir primarily hindi and urdu what is a ghazal sir ghazal is different from other but... type of poetry yes sir sir literal meaning of ghazal is when love whispers and sir uh, it is the different main difference lies in the restrictions so ghazals has a kafi and a radif it is composed of 5 to 10 independent couplets which is also called sher and that's how it's different from a kavita where every other line is dependent on previous line but in a ghazal sher has an independent existence yes sir mm, good uh so is these restrictions which you have mentioned are there in other languages also or except in urdu other languages also yes sir so we see uh, some restriction individually in many form of poetry like doha has a restriction of 13 matras similarly chopai has certain restrictions and uh, have, there can be different forms of poetry where restrictions are there but ghazal has this specific restriction that kafi and radif should be there in uh, first second line and uh, every even line then and an independent existence good. also sir of independent shares that's very good now uh, it's further uh, comes to my mind that who is your favorite poet i am talking from the ghazal point of view yes sir so my favorite is uh, dr bashir bhadra okay bashir bashir bhadra okay yes. where is he living sir uh, he no. is in uh, bhopal or indore i am not sure he but somewhere in madhya pradesh okay is he keeping good health no sir he his health has deteriorated his memory is also failing hmm. so what is uh, uh, unique about dr bashir badar is which make uh, him distinct from other contemporary poets which who are now available around his, in his life of his age group yes sir sir uh, dr bashir bhadra along with uh, the legends like dr rahat indori dr yes sir uh, it's not bhadra yes sir uh, sir dr bashir bhadra uh, along with uh, dr rahat indori dr basim barelvi have been the legends of their time but what differentiates uh, dr bashir bhadra is uh, the versatility so he composed ghazals of all kind not just a specific domain of romantic love or uh, and sir more importantly he his language was very simple and lucid to get to the masses he seldom used tough in urdu words his language was very relatable 
so this is what attracted me towards oh, good okay fine so uh, my final question from my side before my other colleague talk to you is that uh, something called progressive writer movement is a movement in 1930s called progressive writers movement have you heard about it who was its founder in india i'm sorry sir i have not heard about it i'll read about it. oh thank you very much please stop sir okay. डेली uh can you tell me the oldest reference in the vipassana meditation yes sir sir uh, uh, so in the lectures of uh, dr um, the teacher sn goenka ji sir he has told that uh, vipassana was present in ancient india as well and from very uh, long time since time immemorial vipassana was there but somehow it got lost and eventually uh, gautam buddh also attained nirvan through vipassana sir but again it got lost and it was present only in burma in its pure form sir so mr goenka is still alive no sir he has died in uh, 2010 uh okay can you tell me the five rules of vipassana uh yes sir sir uh, first of all is mm, not speaking lie second is uh, not indulging in sexual misconduct third is uh, not harming anyone uh, by mean killing or something then fourth is uh, not stealing uh, fifth uh, intoxication is, uh, uh, yes, yes yeah intoxication not to indulge in intoxication yes. okay have you heard of Uh, heard uh, about uh, public distribution system yes sir uh, it's the uh, oh. free food food yes sir uh, what is it uh, what is importance of pds in indian context yes sir sir uh, it stems from the national food security act 2013 which aim to provide free food grains to the lowest rung of uh, our, our society and uh, pds in general is is like a lifeline for many poors who uh, cannot afford uh, food grain and it somehow is a support in form of state india being a welfare state uh, it prevents uh, a situation like uh, people dying from uh, lack of food have you observed any weakness or criticism of uh, pds yes sir yeah i know great you yes sir sir first of all earlier there used to be lot of leakages in pds uh, it, it is even present today uh, and there was a shanta kumar committee which was constituted for the same uh, sir second weakness is uh, it just provides rice uh, like very basic uh, food items like currently it's rice wheat and few more other things but uh, that that is sufficient for food security not for the nutritional security and uh, third weakness is sir uh, it it is also alleged that it makes people uh, dependent uh, yes sir okay in your district say for example you have been posted in a district as a district head uh, yes, you are being informed that the ration depot holders they are not working properly and in their distribution system uh, there are certain weaknesses such type of the complaints are coming to you how will you overcome them yes sir sir first of all in in such a scenario it often happens that there are few middle men which are being involved and that's how corruption breeds and there is a whole nexus uh, which comes about it there is a first of all my targeting would be these middle men and second of all sir i will take help of technology install cctv cameras in critical locations like the storage uh, system storage place go downs etc or the pds shop itself third i would do sir is uh, 
be transparent in terms of list of beneficiaries probably posting that list in gram sabha so that everyone is aware of the who is eligible for that and who is getting that on which date and what amount so complete transparency will empower people so that they themselves can check corruption fourth of all sir i will ensure that there is a direct complaint box which i have the access to and anyone can complain about anything which is going wrong well few years back the aadhar have been mapped i mean to say aadhar have been linked uh, to claim benefit under pds yes uh, in one of the case somewhere in a state because of uh, you know uh, not linkage of aadhar the distribution of the uh, benefit under pds was not given to the family and the girl died because of the starvation if such a situation happens to you how will you tackle it uh, yes sir the case which you mentioned happened in jharkhand and uh, it ah uh, yes in jharkhand yes. Mm-hmm. yes sir sir it somehow refer reflect the over emphasis on rules is also bad and uh, while executing rules there should also be a degree of empathy as well and sir uh, in that specific case what had happened was that few documents were missing but it was very much clear that uh, the family or the girl was was needing that food sir so in such exceptional situation there has to be rightful use of discretion also that maybe her aadhar card linking could have been fast tracked and that could have been prevented sir it certainly reflected a lack of uh, proactiveness in the side of the then administration sir okay have you observed that there is a drop out of the girl students in the rural areas yes sir uh, can you tell me two reasons for it yes sir sir first of all is uh, sir there uh, i can think of three four reasons if you could allow i could uh, speak sir yeah, sir yeah, first continue. is uh, first is sir lack of toilets in many school separate toilet for girls second is sir uh, when they move from primary school to secondary school so it might be the case that primary school is present in their village but secondary school is located in a district or a, another village which is very far so their safety and security concern is also there that their parents would see that maybe the girl cannot uh, go safely and that's why let's drop her out third is sir child marriage is prevalent in a large part of our country fourth is sir uh, uh, like it it's also perceived that if girls uh, study more maybe the parents have to pay more dowry or uh, all these are cultural restrictions sir which is a very sorry state that is okay and you know the weaknesses if i ask you to make a good plan to overcome all these weaknesses and to enhance the enrollment of the girls uh, say double the figure uh, make a good plan please continue yes. sir i would like to uh, take help from what bihar government has did like a dis- uh, distribution of free cycles to girls and it has been proven that after distribution of free cycles the enrollment increased sir secondly uh, making of separate toilet is the first condition thirdly sir uh, women teachers can also be appointed in school so large part of teachers uh, sometimes are male and girl student is very reluctant fourth is our awareness campaign campaigns by through gram panchayats only so uh, persuading that girls education is very important uh, this would be there sir and fifth i would say sir uh, is uh, like ensuring the schemes like sukanya samriddhi yojana where uh, greater interest is given but it is only eligible if the girl uh, crosses a certain age so that scheme is inherently designed that to increase the enrollment only that sustenance of education so uh, st- uh, stressing on these points would help sir okay how will you neutralize the gender biasness yes sir sir i believe uh, since it's a societal problem so it cannot be cured completely by any ro- law or regulation and uh, social problems li- require social solutions and uh, hence sir the role of village elderly become very important in this case 
if uh, they realize that girls education is equally important as boys education then this change happens this can happen through they interacting with female leaders or female uh, female female who have done well in their life and female how had a, it has impacted the household earnings so making them aware so sensitization is the best route for this sir very good so this is all from my side now professor goel please thank you sir sir good afternoon sir permission yeah yes sir uh, you are from computer science i think computer engineer uh, no sir civil engineer civil engineer civil engineer okay civil engineer. okay okay can you tell me that is there any country who has made law on ai yes sir european yes sir european union has been uh, developed a uh, bill of uh, like uh, first ai act and uh, apart from it sir united states has brought an executive order also what lessons we should take from european union to make our laws on ai yes sir sir uh, european union's law Uh, the very when one very good feature was that it has categorized the ai in terms of risk so there is very high risk artificial intelligence like mass surveillance it has been disabled that no one can use it then there is moderate risk ai and there is less risk ai so less risk ai product and moderate risk ai product are being allowed so this is one thing which we can incorporate sir second thing is ai labeling that if a product is made by ai then the manufacturer has to write it that it is ai labeled so it increases the awareness these are the two points which we can uh, learn from them sir so what is going on in india uh, myanmar border why india is worried the home minister is doing something yes sir sir there was a recent attacks uh, some unfortunate incidents in manipur uh, for which the honorable chief minister of manipur has said that the some hand from myanmar is also playing a role there what are the interventions of ministry of home affairs no sir the free movement regime from myanmar is being uh, disabled what what about that what is that free movement regime what is that sir it was uh, basically 60 uh, till uh, like along the india myanmar border it was allowed that as for, for a certain kilometer uh, people from both sides can go on other side how many, with very less how many kilometer how many kilometer i think 16 kilometer i am not very sure that exactly yeah yeah you are right yeah. why india is so concerned for maldives a small tiny island country what is the now policy yes sir sir uh, india's concern for maldives emanates from the fact that the leader which has been elected there uh, mohammad meizu so he basically uh, was a product of his party campaign for an india out campaign and uh, there was a momentum in that maldives that india is interfering in its affairs and sir for india maldives lies in a very crucial position in indian ocean region and as india is emerging as leader of global south and is vouching for a free and in, uh, open indo pacific so maldives uh, importance becomes increases right have you heard uh, the frequent news bab el mandap what is that yes sir bab el mandap is a very narrow strait which connects red sea and uh, arabian sea like uh, so sir babel mandap yeah. is referred to a basic gate um, babel refers to gate so and there has been bombings by uh, houthi rebellions of yemen on the on shipments as a response to israel and gaza conflict good do you know gram sabha gram sabha in the village have you heard gram sabha yes sir it's Yes, sir. it's part of. It is a constitutional body. Is it, is it a constitutional body or statutory body? Uh, sir, uh, I 
I don't know whether to classify it as statutory or constitutional, but it emanated from seventy third constitutional amendment. If it emanated from the constitutional amendment, it is. It means it is a constitutional body. Then again, one more question from this amendment: What is the connection? What is the relation between Election Commission of India and State Election Commission? Whether State Election Commission is subordinate to Election Commission of India? No, sir. In the current setup, it's not subordinate. What is the function of State Election Commission? I mean to say. Yes, sir. So, so State Election Commission is being uh, responsible for holding uh, elections of uh, urban local bodies and panchayati raj institutions from the 73rd and 74 Constitution Act and prepare separate electoral roles also for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Hi, sir. Um, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'm great, sir. Thanks for asking. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you explain a little bit on Karl Polanyi state society relationship? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I have not heard this. Okay. <clears throat> Recently, uh, you know, just uh, just immediately before we, we are talking about women in Panchayat. Uh, we have seen, you know, increase in uh, of women in numbers in Panchayat. They are representing well, but still women are facing several challenges. Can you, you know, outline three challenges that women still faces at gram level? Yes. So the first problem is often uh, they are proxy and uh, like on the face of it they are pradhans but uh, there is a concept of proxy pradhan that they are, uh, their husband is winning the election so on second front even if he she is not a proxy pradhan if even she if she has won her election on her own there is very less acceptability mm -hmm. of women as a leader in a rural setup in india so she has to face constant tussle to vouch for women's concerns and women's issues and people generally don't accept women as a leader. Third uh, issue would be, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, third yeah. issue would uh, be, can sir. You, uh, you know, can you um, portray uh, Dr. Ambedkar as a sociologist? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, Dr. Ambedkar, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, looking him from a sociological standpoint, refer, uh, he can be described as a cult, a cult leader, uh, especially for the downtrodden and the marginalized section of society. And uh, from a subaltern view, sir, uh, he, he completely vouched for the marginalized and challenged the established order. And uh, in some sense, sir, he, by embracing Buddhism, also showed a path and a vision. And sir, he was also epitome of how education can uplift uh, a social status of even a, a so-called lower caste. Have you heard about a Hindu code bill? Yes, sir. What happened to that? Uh, sir, I have to read more about it. Like I have not very good knowledge on this. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, Karl Marx had uh, said something about India, about 1857 revolt. Yeah, anything? Yeah. Uh, sir, I don't know the uh, what he said on 1857 revolt, but he talked about India as an uh, as an Asiatic mode of production. So Indian society didn't fit mm -hmm. in his classification of mode of production, which he described as uh, five stages Karl of Marx mode of production. Karl Marx has a later exchange with Ghalib, you know. Ghalib was a good, great poet, and yes, he was his writing was revolutionary in that time. Yes, sir. Right, and he had and Mark Karl Marx had exchange of later. You know what he Karl Marx wrote to Ghalib about revolution? I'm sorry, sir. I am eager to know this. I'll read about it. Okay, fine. Uh, can you uh, tell me about uh, you know uh, <clears throat> annihilation of caste? written by Dr. Ambedkar, what he suggests. Yes, sir. 
sir uh, annihilation of caste uh, was a concept given by dr ambedkar in which he talked about he talked against the views of uh, gandhi ji so gandhi ji wanted to reform caste from within itself within the realm of uh, religion itself but uh, dr ambedkar said that till the caste is eliminated completely uh, from society it's not very possible and he product, uh, produced revolutionary ideas like uh, appointing priest by examination then he said inter caste marriages should be allowed uh, like should be promoted mm. in a very big scale and uh, he talked about urbanization that moving away from the village setup which is full of ignorance really? so all these methodologies mm. he gave that uh, caste should be completely eliminated because it's acting as a social barrier but do you think that even the inter caste marriage can eliminate a caste problem in india uh yes sir to a certain extent i agree because even today inter caste this is itself along the line of patriarchy sir i believe uh, if inter caste promo- uh, caste marriage is promoted so currently it's j- only 5% and this in itself reflects how india is still a, a caste centric society and if sir cross fertilization happens that uh, a person of different caste is marrying a person of different caste then the whole idea of pull uh, the whole idea of pure lineage the whole idea of endogamy which sustain caste will disappear hmm. yeah. what is the root causes of caste we are still you know unable to overcome with the caste system what why it is so sir uh, i feel that caste system has become the part of psyche of uh, almost every indian and uh, since mm. it has bar- become part of psyche and mindset uh, it becomes mm. difficult to change moreover uh, there are political politicization of caste as doc- talked by dr rajni kothari that caste is being used uh, as a vote ban caste chemistry caste arithmetic is being used moreover sir uh, mm. the affirmative action is promoting reverse discrimination uh, that uh, for uplifting lower caste uh, generally the it is perceived a negative discrimination is being started against them then sir uh, mm. agitations and social movements on the lines of Wait, caste no, all questions from the caste system how you know colonial government or advent of the british or other colonial government you know the imperial power in india changed the caste system yes sir sir uh, basically caste got enumerated for the first time in colonial regime only and uh, since uh, they had the policy of divide and rule and the first step was to enumerate uh, caste and uh, by enumeration mm. of caste uh, they basically tried to society, divide society they promoted certain caste uh, group as well as for their uh, own purpose and uh, mm. sir uh, i believe the larger dynamics of uh, Uh, divide and rule worked and play okay have you heard about michel foucault sorry sir no okay can you tell me what c right mill talking about power elite yes sir sir c right mills uh, so in this elite theory in which pareto and mosca has also contributed c right mills gives the concept that mm-hmm. uh, in united states he found out that power is being concentrated in three institutions only that is military government and corporate sector and these are distributing power among themselves and uh, basically uh, they are forming an elite group which is controlling making decisions for own their, their own vested interest and in this process mass is being neglected okay to whom he was responding uh, in you know you know in related to explaining american democracy Which, sir, he was, who was the scholar to whom yes sir see so right he was, was responding Gandhi. about the power actually vested in the elite not in the several organization so he was responding to talcott parsons and the whole uh, functionalist school there uh, pluralist school basically mm-hmm. said that power is distributed among society uh, so when society mm-hmm. has power people have power different institutions have power and talcott persons also hmm. argued on similar line but uh, c w mills uh, basically criticized that okay uh, can you tell me the you know the vassalya plan right that government has launched recently 
for you know for protection and safeguard of children uh sir i will have to read more about it i just saw it in headlines maybe okay fine uh, your interview is over your, your, now the chair will give you you know feedback thank you so so saurabh yes sir. nice talking to you it was pleasure talking to you and uh, congratulations for a very good interview and very inter good interactive interaction with you at this uh, me and my colleagues find that you are uh, emphatically very clear and uh, categorically very strong about most of your responses and uh, we appreciate that we appreciate and we like it i think uh, uh, i will categorize them very good plus very good just to excellent responses from you uh, i don't have much to suggest to you in terms of your performance uh, except that certain areas where you yourself felt you have to read more and you don't know and that was the right answer from your side but definitely you have to read more about those area than those concerned uh, hindu court bill for one area where i think you must know because uh, the legal arrangement in post independence india for the personal life personal matters of a hindu in india whether succession or adoption or marriage or divorce so all these things are covered in the hindu court bills uh, so these are very important in terms of the social reform or religious reform of hindu uh, life in india in the same context i will say that caste system which you have talked so in detail you use a word it's in our psyche the psyche of yes. the note down because have a pen pen you use the word that is caste system is in our psyche uh, i hope that you know the uh, full meaning of the word psyche and its implication and you have not used it very casually uh, board can ask more question on psychological aspect of psyche and how it has come to psyche one important point i think you have missed uh, while discussing the caste caste system is the references of caste system in our ancient texts and how these ancient texts have affected or as you use the word indian psyche unless those texts are or their impact on our society or on our life or on our culture or on our religion is not removed this psyche as the word which you have used is difficult to be tame therefore you have to correlate with this the the, the differences of caste in our ancient texts and how it has been misinterpreted or misused and has been causing all this harm this is one session i have i will make it to you uh your responses on urdu poetry was appreciably very good but uh, one question he asked uh, which was definitely a very difficult question letter from karl marx to ghazib so at least i have also not heard about any letter from karl marx to ghazib but you must know about it go and find out whether karl marx has ever written a letter to ghazib or ghazib has ever said anything about marxism or uh, or or socialism or something this philosophy of thought gazib's poetry is, is considered to be very diversified and very contemporary of any contemporary of present time also uh, people may ask question about that so some of these things are i will suggest uh, some of the my colleagues have suggested that you may prepare a list of government important schemes yeah. uh, uh, which uh, may help you there is a contemporary lot of things happening uh, in terms of women sector women development including the reservation in assemblies and parliament and uh, uh, rural development manerga uh, things like that sort of things happening on all these front agriculture yeah. like that sector you must read about that and the best sources the website of these ministries and and their mm. annual reports and website and you find annual report on their website also if you want to read in detail you can go to annual report otherwise websites are also fm so may i know when is your interview uh, sir it is not in phase 1 so i have time so no date has come to you so far 
Thank you so much sir thank you so much Thank you so much